much y'all see from Paper Rock to your studio. And you know what? It's been cold. I live in Arizona and what my cold is in comparison to what everyone else thinks is cold is very different. But still, I've been cold and I want spring. I'm ready for it. I don't want any more cold feet or wearing a, a sweatshirt or long pants. I just want spring. So <laughs> I had this stencil from Stencil Girl laying on my desk and it reminded me of flowers because of this, you know, the kind of whimsical circles that the name of the stencil is Circle Circles. Um, and I just, I wanted to play with it. And I also had out my uh, gelatin plate from the live stream on Thursday. And I decided to play with this stencil and make myself some prints that had to do with spring. So I still had this So Soft fabric paints from DecoArt out on my desk because um, I was also playing with those last Thursday. And so I decided to use those because they were already there. And I'm doing my technique that I call crusty bits. And I made all the papers that I used on this collage doing this with the same stencil, just changing up the colors. And I put the stencil on, I put some color of the lighter colors on, then I took out the stencil, put some of the darker colors, and then let it dry and put a neutral color, which in the most in most of these cases is white, over the top and peeled off all those dried crusty bits off of the plate. So the the plate on the right hand side is the is the six by six and the one in the middle is an eight by ten. And I just show you a couple of these because I wanted to show you the collaging process more than the jelly printing, but uh, I do have a lot of gel print videos um, of all different types of techniques and things. And I will link in the iCard the uh, playlist that has my, my gel plate in, uh, obsession. Um, and you can watch some of those if you don't really understand how uh, using a gel gelatin plate works. So I'm just showing you again with a different color, basically the same process. And this is a real fun stencil. Uh, yeah, I should use it more. <laughs> I probably will. I also used it on the crazy shoes uh, sometime at the beginning of the week. And um, I don't know, it's a fun stencil. It's fun. So I'm just, I'm fanning with my hand there, trying to get it dry and then I go ahead, this time uh, I mix the white with a little bit of the pink to make kind of a light pink to pull up my crusty bits. So, you know, crusty bits, they're awesome. I like this way of gel printing better than most of the other stuff that I do. Although I have, I do a lot of other stuff, but I just really like the varied colors and not just one stark color. I like to have that, I don't know, scratchy, grungy, but yet still pretty look. So as you can see, I have several papers and um, the papers on the left that I'm gonna use for the collage are printed on uh, printer paper, you know, from my inkjet printer, just plain text weight paper. And then these ones I'm using on the background are printed on deli paper. And they were the first ones that I did. And this one that I'm tearing right now <laughs> reminds me of lemonade. So maybe this should be <laughs> a summer collage instead of spring. You can, you can drink lemonade anytime, but doesn't that just remind you of lemonade? I don't know why. It just does. Um, this is a handy little too. This is a, a deckle edge ruler to help me tear. I was going to make a torn paper collage, but I ended up making a cut paper collage. So I don't know what, if you want to call it paper painting, if you want to call it paper piecing. Um, ultimately, it's a collage using paper. And that's just that. So I've got a 12 by 12 pre-gessoed canvas that I'm doing my collage on. And I am kind of sectioning the background. Obviously, my 8 by 10 gel plate doesn't print a print big enough to do a 12 by 12. That's just math right there. Ew, math. <laughs> so I have some different pieces that are similar in color, but not the same. But I can, I can, I can use them and make it even more interesting 
then it would be otherwise. And I probably would do this anyway. I mean, I, even if I had a, a print big enough to fit the entire background, it would be boring. And I would do it this way anyway. I like to section things. Um, I don't know. I, I like to do out abstract art sometimes, a lot of times. I don't know that I do it very much on my channel, but um, I like the idea of making sections. Um, I like the rule of thirds. In this case, it's kind of uh, two thirds, one third, although it's a little bit off. But um, I wanted the predominant piece to be that lemonade piece. And then I wanted to fill in with the other pieces and make kind of a grid pattern. So then I had to decide what I wanted to put on my collage. And of course, like I said earlier, the stencil was sitting on my desk and it reminded me of those fun flowers, whimsical flowers that you see around a lot of places that are just basically swirls. And the stencil is a bunch of swirly circles stuck together. So I thought I can use those swirly stencil circles to make my flowers and it will be so easy. So if anybody wants to make a collage like this, I recommend this stencil. It's so easy to cut out those shapes once you've printed them or even if you just stenciled them. You can just stencil them. You don't even have, you don't even have to uh, do the gel printing if you don't want to. I recommend you do it because it's fun, but if you don't want to, you could use this stencil to uh, make these flowers so easily by just stenciling it and you would still have those those kind of white swirlies around the edge. So I drew out my pattern, my general pattern. I didn't make an actual cutting pattern this time because I knew I was just going to wing it. Um, I wing it. That's what I do. <laughs> so um, I'm not that fussy. Things move around. Things change. Uh, it's very organic process for me. Also very relaxing. I love to do this. I love to do this. I was having so much fun doing this that I didn't want to stop. Literally. I just, I just, I can't even tell you how much I love this, but I started out with my kind of jar and it, uh, I did it in the blues because I have a blue Mason jar that I drink water out of all the time. <laughs> kind of, uh, I don't know, redneck of me, I guess. I don't know, but mason jars make really good glasses. If you like to have a glass glass with your ice water or your iced tea, that's a great alternative. It's nice and big, whole quart. And uh, I probably drink four to six of those a day, either water or uh, iced tea. So this is my blue jar. I guess it's a mason jar. It's also a vase. <laughs> So then I took the print that has the darker greens that I printed and um, I'm cutting stems and leaves out of that. Uh, I don't want everything to look exactly the same. So it's, it's a random process. I'm cutting one by one, making some of them bent, some of them curled, some of them curved because, you know, taking a die cutter and making all the leaves the same would not have the same organic feel in your collage. I think anyone can cut out a leaf shape. I mean, I don't, I, if you don't think you can, just go try it and you'll figure out that you can. So then I had the, um, the two different pieces. One of them has yellow, red, orange, and pink. And the other one has pink and purple. And then some purple mixed in with white to make kind of a lavender color because I didn't have a lighter purple. And um, I'm just cutting around the circles. And because of the stencil, I have those extra printed circles on there. So it's just easy. It's simple. The only struggle that I'm having is that because the stencils are laying on, on the stencil, all the circles are laying on top of each other. Some of them are not full. So then I just cut out the partial ones and I tuck them by behind the other ones. And I end up with some uh, paper left. I don't even have to use it all. But this is just uh, inkjet printer paper from my printer that I've printed on with my gel plate. So easy, so fun, so freeing, and very springy. <laughs> or maybe summery, springy or summery, depending on whether you think that that paper reminds you of lemonade or not. 
So then I'm using my Liquitex gel matte medium. I've used it for the whole process and I also have a um, used up gift card from Amazon that I'm using to make sure that there aren't any bubbles if I'm doing a larger piece of the paper like when I was doing the background I really had to carefully remove any bubbles and with these smaller pieces it's so easy to put them on I mean I'm just using my glue brush spreading out some of the glue and sticking them down and then then using the glue brush over the top to smooth it and put an extra coat over the top the whole process I used the liquid liquitex matte gel formula medium uh, sometimes for lighter papers especially things like napkins and tissue papers I use the fluid matte medium so I do recommend that you have both and you just get a feel for which kind of paper it takes which kind of medium um, you know it's it's just a thing it's a thing that I believe in so um, I like I liked the thicker formula for this and that's what I used so then I start putting down some of the leaves around the edges because I know that they're going to be out there. And then I start to place my flowers and my original placement got ruined, you know, because I dumped them all off. So then I had to re rethink it. Uh, it turned out slightly different than what the original one was, I'm sure, but it's fine. Um, what I'm thinking about is balance. Uh, trying to get a good balance over the whole composition and I intentionally put the jar on the right hand side I didn't want it right in the middle uh, I like things that are off-center quirky uh, a little bit different than just you know your static here's a vase here's some flowers it's all balanced and you know perfectly centered and everything is lined up I don't don't like that <laughs> but I still do want balance I want everything to not feel like it's off kilter uh, when you look at it and I want I want flow I want you to be able to look from one side to the other going around the canvas in a circle so that your eye doesn't fall off the edge so that's what I'm working on as I'm uh, gluing down the flowers and I want some of the leaves to be sticking out on top. Some of them I've already glued down, so I end up adding more leaves. Um, had to cut out some more because I glued them all down and then they were all on the bottom. They were all under the flowers and that's not what I wanted at all. When I had laid it out originally, I had some of them sticking out and going over the flowers and the front of the flowers and the behind the flowers. and Yeah, I didn't think of that when I started gluing. <laughs> I had a few of them loose, but most of them were stuck down already. <laughs> I don't remember when I actually figured it out. It's like, oh yeah. So there you can really see that there's like a half of a flower that needs to tuck behind the other ones. Um, but you, you will never know. You would never know if you didn't see the video. The people who don't watch the video, they're just out of luck. They just see the picture on Facebook and they say, oh, that's pretty. And then they never watch the video. Those people will never know. It will be our secret between me and you. <laughs> there are those people, you know. They comment on Facebook, but they don't ever watch the video. They're out there. Most of them are my family. You know who you are. <laughs> Wait, they're not watching the video, so they didn't hear me say that. Okay, anyway. Here's where I'm cutting out some more uh, leaves to get some more balance. Um, add some more leaves over the top of the flowers because they wouldn't all be behind. That just isn't realistic, even though this is not at all realistic. This is obviously very whimsical and abstract, but you know what I mean. The leaves would sometimes be in front and sometimes be behind because that's just how it is. So then I decided that I really needed to bring something down to the bottom um let's see what is that left hand corner because i needed to bring that color down there and i needed to have something for balance so i decided to have one of the flowers laying on the table 
out of it. It has escaped. It's out of the mason jar. It's it's going crazy. It's out there on its own. Who knows what's going to happen? And I started with just the red, but then I decided I needed purple too uh, for balance. And so I decided to just add this other one as well, even though there's only one stem. I probably should have added another stem, but I wasn't thinking of it of it at the time. I was like, huh, I just need a piece of purple down there. So maybe that's just a petal. It could just be a petal. I'm not sure. You know, think what you want. <laughs> and then because it's uh, only got half of a circle from the edge of the stencil, I needed to cover up that edge. So I used a leaf um, coming off the stem and going across that uh, edge that didn't have any flower and that worked fine and then I think I just add a couple more leaves here and there where things are bothering me or I think something needs uh, something I just add it <laughs> oh yeah over on that side on the right hand side I decided that something needed to to hang down to come down to for balance see how it wasn't quite balanced until I put that leaf on so then now I'm just cutting some little skinny pieces that would be the edge of the mason jar where it's in front of the stems. You know, you can see through the jar and you can see the stems, but then there would be some indicator that there is something in front of those stems. So I'm just cutting these little pieces where that the, the threads for the screw part of the mason jar would be. And then I also decide to eventually add some highlights. Um, yeah, had to add that other other uh, leaf. It was bothering me. <laughs> and there I'm just going around making sure that everything is stuck down. Because if you, if you push your brush underneath the edges and it comes up, then you know you need to put more glue. And then I think this is where I'm adding a highlight. Um, so that would be where the light is hitting the jar on that side and then it's also hitting the jar like at the top where that curved part of it is um, where it's starting to curve down from where the screwy part is and then there's a curvy part and that's the other highlight that I added so that it kind of you kind of get the idea that it's a glass jar um, while still being very whimsical so then I let this dry so that uh, I wouldn't have wet medium on there to ruin my pins and then I got out my Faber-Castell artist brush pins and um, using a gray I started out with that kind of a taupe light gray and then I decided that that wasn't the right color it wasn't dark enough so I added I got out a different darker gray and I almost think maybe I should have even went a shade darker I'm not sure if I needed to or not but what I'm doing is going around all the glued on pieces and I'm adding a shadow. This really, really helps when you're doing paper collage to to make the thing appear as it, it was intended to be on there. It was intended to be on there. It's not just like some glued thing that you slapped on there with some glue and then you were done. No, this is like a finishing adding of intention is really what it is. I, in, I intended these things to be here. Here's the shadow around the edges you know, there I, f I found a spot where there was something coming up, so I had to glue it back down. Even as you're doing your finishing, you still might find something that's a little bit loose and might need to get collaged back down. So I went around the edges of things, um, also adding in a shadow where the tabletop is because I don't like it when things float. <laughs> that really drives me crazy. So yeah, I had to fix that. Then I decided to add a few little details, um, starting with the gray. I put some gray dots in the centers of the flowers as if they had stamen. And then I got out my white Posca pen because I really can't do a project without a white Posca pen. It's hard for me. It's, it's a struggle, you know, I probably need a 12 step program for that. So I drew a circle around all the gray dots and I'd only put those on the reddish pinkish oranges ones. So then I decided that the purpley pinky ones needed white dots. So that's pretty much the finishing. 
If you've enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment so I know that you're here. Subscribe if you haven't already, turn on your notifications if you want to be notified, and share if you want to. <laughs> you getting tired of hearing that? <laughs> That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.